This is the Morningstar MC6 Pro, and compared to the MC6, boy have they upgraded it. With a new processor, a massive display upgrade, and an unprecedented range of connections, the MC6 Pro is designed to offer enhanced visual feedback, making it easier than ever to access the information and control what you want to. The three screens, as you can see here, can be customized with different fonts, and you have color strips to either group or differentiate the switches. These color strips can dim or brighten to show you the state of each preset, so you'll always know which effect you've engaged and which ones you've bypassed. As I've done here, you can even change the background color, you can change the color of the text itself, and you can now even add shapes and symbols to the preset names for some intuitive identification. The MC6 Pro offers the widest range of I.O. I've ever seen on a paddle. It has five pin MIDI in and out ports, four Omni ports, and just above there, two TRS relay ports. If you don't know what they are, they enable amp switching and control over any device that uses relay switching. So if your amp has relay switching, maybe to turn on an effect or change a preset, you can do it right here. Not one, but two USB-C ports. One is a host and one is device. The device one, you can actually control the MC6 Pro and program it up with the editor, but also to control your DAW. The host port is so this can actually act as a USB-C host, so you don't need to bring a computer with you. Inside, this little baby has been upgraded massively. It has a brand new processor inside, which has pretty much doubled everything inside. The MC6 Pro has 128 banks, each bank containing four pages of six buttons, providing you with over 3,000 presets at your command. And a single preset can now actually send 32 different messages, which is twice as many as before. Imagine pressing one button and sending 32 different messages. Now, over the past couple of years, the one thing that's got really popular is wireless MIDI adapters. Things like the CME Pro MIDI jack. And that's why on this side, we have two connections for MIDI in, MIDI out TRS, where you can connect something like the MIDI jack and experience the freedom of wireless MIDI control. Now, Morningstar's slogan for this is it's time to move beyond what a MIDI controller can do. So let's see what it can do. So you join us at the desk and I've got the MC6 Pro plugged in with a USB-C cable into my Mac. And the first thing we need to do is program this up. The fastest way to do this is actually with the Morningstar editor, which is completely online. All you need is an internet browser, something like Chrome, and works on both PC and Mac. So you just need to go to morningstar.io, then go to support, and then we're gonna go to editors. As you can see here, it says, select the device to connect or use it in demo mode. We've already connected it, so if we click this, there it is, we can see it there, and it loads the editor up straight away. Now I've already pre-programmed this up on preset A, but I just wanna take you around the new editor for the MC6 Pro, as there's a couple of changes compared to the MC8, the MC6, and the MC3. First of all, the banks. We have up to 128 banks, and they're on the left-hand side just here. You can see at the very top, you've got edit preset, edit bank, controller settings, user library, Control Backup, MIDI Monitor, MIDI Dictionary, Editor Settings, Firmware Update, and Help. So we're in bank number one. Let me just go to bank number two. Now, as I click this on the editor on the screen, you can see straight away the Morningstar has actually changed. And this is what it looks like when you very first boot it up. If I go back to bank number one, you'll see the Morningstar changes, and it changes pretty quickly. This is great because you get a visual representation of what you've done really quickly. You'll also see on the morning start, right in the middle screen here, it says edit mode. We're on bank number one, and we're on page number one. So having a look on the right hand side, this is all to do with this one bank. So we've got four pages of six presets. So you have preset A all the way through to preset X. Then you have four expression controls because you've got the Omni Jacks. So these six actually correlate to the six that I have here. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F. And Morningstar actually do print this on the MC6 Pro. Of course, mentally you discard that when you go into the other pages because you'll be on preset H, preset M. As I said to you before, the nice thing is when you make a control change or you make any kind of change on the editor, it visually happens on the morning star. So right now we've got toggle page, for example, here. If I give this a click, you can see we're now on page two, it actually identifies it there. Give it a click on page three, and give it a click again on page four. Give it another click, we'll go back to page one. We've got bank up and bank down. So if I banked up, we're now on bank number two. If I bank down, we're on bank number one. Now the nice thing about the editor that they did an update a little while back is these. So copy preset, paste preset, swap presets, clear the preset, undo, and you've got more tools as well. This is really handy, especially if you're making changes that are very similar. Maybe you just wanna copy and paste a preset. You don't wanna write it all out again. You can do that. And the really nice one is swap, where you can swap a preset from one button to another and they just change over. 
And then all you gotta do is click save preset and it's done. So just to show you, I'm gonna change something here. We're gonna go into bank two and that's a completely empty preset. And the first thing we're gonna do actually is go to edit bank. I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it looper. When I click save, you can actually see right in the middle there, it's got it as looper. Even if I change it for capitals, or if I have it for something longer, it actually changes the font size to make it fit. This is fab because there's so many devices out there that where you start putting something that's a bit longer, you either abbreviate it in a way you don't like, puts dots, this is really, really handy. So for example, let me just put something really long. And it's just cut off the D on that one. That's pretty good considering I've just put headrest looper board. And obviously it's two separate words there. So if I was to just take that out, just take headrush out and just call it looper board, click save. You can see the way it changed the font size to make it fit right in the middle. This happens across the board, whether you're dealing with presets, whether you're dealing with banks or any kind of changes. So let's go into edit this preset. And as you can see, I'm editing it for the looper board. So what I want to do is I want to change this for looping, but then I'm also going to be playing around with the presets for amps as well. So we're on preset A, which is the first preset on the first page, which is this one right here. As you can see, it says empty. And what we're going to do is I'm going to change this over to record hyphen play. Simple as that. Now the new thing with the MC6 Pro is colors and the color strips. And you can see here, you've got position one, position two, and shift. And each one has a strip, the text, and the background. This relates to just this one here. And right now it's black on the strip, it's black on the background, and the text is white. If you give any of these a click, it will bring up an LED color position. So let's change it. Let's go over to say, put the strip as red and then let's click save. And right away we've got record play and you can see there's a little red line there. Now that may be all I need, but what you could do is you can change the text color and we can also change the background color as well. So let's just save that as a preset. So it's completely changed and it's got yellow font and it's got red for the background and the strip. Let's change that again. Let's put the strip as green, click save. And there we go. You can customize this however you want to. And I think this is fabulous because when this is actually on the ground and you're looking down, colors are a fantastic visual representation, visual cue. So you understand what's happening right at that moment faster. Now the other thing you can do is you can give it a long name. So let's call it record and play and save that. So you can see now the long name appears out in the middle. But if I was to change something over for D, where D has something, so let's just change that now. And we'll just call it FX1 for now. And click save. So if I was to press that, you can see it comes up there. If I was to press that one, you can see effect one. The reason for this is so you can understand which button you pressed last and which one is active. Again, a really great visual cue to help you join your performance. So whilst we're here, let's actually change this strip and let's give it a blue color and we'll give it a uh, purple background. Why not? There we go. So now if I do that and I do that, we can see that happening. Now the other thing you can do as well in position two and shift, you could actually have different colors. So you could obviously have an on and an off color. So as you turn it on or off, you can see we've actually got the colors there. We've also got dim colors. We could have that green color or the blue color dim down. So you know when it's off and when it's on, you could have it as a bright color or the other way around. It's totally up to you. So here underneath, we've got toggle mode off. We've got message scroll off. And we've also got toggle group none. So you can actually put things into groups. So you can actually have a different toggle group depending on what you need. Then under that, we've got the preset messages, the actual messages you're gonna send by pressing this button. So with each switch, you can actually send up to 32 messages per switch, which I think is crazy, but also absolutely amazing. So let's just do something real simple to begin with. We can go, there's no action. What we're gonna do on a press, we're actually going to do something. So we're going to do a program change and then the options to do the program change comes up. So you can start putting in things like the numbers in yourself or you've got open user library or add to user library. So if you've got stuff that's already pre-saved from somewhere else, you can bring it in and it means you're just saving time whilst you're building this up. We haven't got anything here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use PC number one, for example. Are we sending to all MIDI channels? No, we're not. We're just sending to MIDI channel one. If obviously it's not a program change and it was a control change, then it's gonna give you more information. So we can actually go into the MIDI dictionary. This is where a community of Morningstar users have actually added in things like the right CC number for different pedals. 
So let's go to the MIDI dictionary. Let's select a device. So right here, we've got the head rush. We're gonna go into looper board and we can select a parameter. This is fab because this has been built over time and this can save you a lot of time. So we wanna do record and play. So we're gonna do track one, record play overdub. That's what we need. It's CC number three and it's value 11. Let's apply that. How easy was that? Let's go back into the MIDI dictionary and let me just show you all the different ones. Now it could take hours to show you all the different ones, but you've got some really popular ones here. So if we go to boss, You've got a couple of different things here. We've got things like the GT1000 Core, the RV500. If you go down to Strymon, you've got things like the Blue Sky, the Big Sky. You've got the Flint, you've got the Sunset. Go to TC Electronics, and you've got a couple of ones there. The Plethora X3, the Plethora X5, the Flashback. And go to TC Helicon, and you've actually got the Voice Live 3, and even the Voice Live Touch 2, because someone has actually figured it out. Now, the great thing is, if you know the presets, you can add them to the MIDI dictionary, and therefore, you're submitting them to the community so other people can use them. So now, when we hit Record Play here, and I'm using it with the looper board, because I've saved it on Bank B here, when we know that here, then that way, that is actually going to do the Record, Play, and Overdub for Track 1. And that's one action. We can actually do 32 different actions. So maybe on the message number two, what we can do is we can actually, again, on press, on the same press, we can actually turn around and do a CC control. Let's go into here. Let's change something else. So we can turn around and say, well, we've got a TC Helicon Voice Live 3 Extreme. And what I want to do is I also want to turn on the harmonies. So I want to do vocal hit. Let's have a quick look where we've we got vocal harmony. There we go. So at the same time as actually hitting record on here, it will turn on the vocal harmonies on a different machine and we can click apply. So this one button is now doing two separate things. Of course, that's just an example and you can do whatever you like. But as you can see, I haven't had to go to a manual or go online and search for the CC numbers. I've been able to find it through the MIDI dictionary. Now, everything I'm doing right now is on preset A, one preset. We have four pages of presets. So if you go to preset M, for example, let's toggle the page so we can actually see it. And you can see these tiny little markers here, and they are actually the letters of the different buttons. So we can see that one is M. I'm gonna do an action on this one. We're gonna do a press. We're gonna do a CC control. Let's open the MIDI dictionary. Uh, let's use Black Star Amplification. And we've got a Silver Line Deluxe. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a Super Crunch. There we go. So CC5 value 3 apply. And then we'll just call this Crunch. This one we're going to give it a pink. And we'll give it a low pink there. And the text color can be gray. There we go. So you can see it there. So it's actually the background is on a low. We can change that around. So let's get the strip as low and the background as high. Maybe the gray is a little bit too dark. Let's have white. There we go. That's nice and bright now. So you can see there's a tiny little strip there. It's gone a darker color and this is the brighter color. And as you can see, now toggle is on. When I press it, it's actually black at the moment. So let's get this into a full-blown bright color. There we go. And let's go yellow for the text. Done. So now you can see as we press it, maybe you can see the change there on the camera. I know it's off right now because that's actually in white and it's how I've designed it. I could even put this text in black and then go preset, save preset. Let's just change the background of this one to a faded one. There we go. So we've got crunch in there and as I tap it, it goes on, it's nice and bright, and turn it off again. So what I've just done to make it even easier is because toggle mode is on, the toggle name I've called Crunch On with capital letters. So now you can see as I press this, and you've got Crunch On, and then we can even turn that one and call that one Crunch Off. Let's just save that. There we go, so Crunch is off, Crunch is now on. Now at this point, I'm actually not giving it a long name. So we could say uh, Amp Crush, and then just go save there we go and that is on preset m which is this one here if i was to tap p you'll actually see that there's nothing there so, so with preset p let's change this to uh distortion and call this dist off and then this is dist on it's in toggle mode so we're going to have a red like this and then we're going to have the bright red for the on. Let's save that preset. 
So now we can see distortion off, crunches on, and let's go and grab this. So press, let's go CC, let's go back into our MIDI dictionary. Let's go for the black star again. And then what we'll do is let's find our distortion. Cool, so we're gonna be use voice OD1, give that an apply, and then save that to the preset. Now once that's saved, this will actually become live. Just a word of warning, if you don't have any messages and you start putting things like toggles on, the toggle won't work until you have some kind of message in there. Now if I turn that on, you can see there that they're actually working really, really well. There we go, so we can clearly see now that they're off. It's a great visual representation. If I turn that on, the crunch is on, and if I turn that on, the distortion's on. Hi, slightly different look. Now the Morningstar MC6 Pro can actually do one more thing, which is actually play with relay ports, which is here. And Morningstar have sent me this cable, which is a mini TRS to normal size jack connector. And we're gonna plug it into relay port A, which is just there. Now I've been editing this and playing around with this for a little while, and you can see it looks slightly different. I'm using it for the RC505 Mark II. The first five buttons are actually to do with the RC505, but this button here actually says mic off. If I give it a click, it'll go to mic on. And what that's doing is that's using the relay port. Now my amp that's just down here is the Sonnet 60 by Blackstar, and it has a foot switch out. So you can do a couple of things, like play around with the reverb, or you can mute the mic. So for this example, I only need a TS cable, so I've just plugged that into here, and the other end is gonna go into the back of the Morningstar. So now, without doing anything, the microphone on here is plugged directly into the Morningstar, and one, two, one, two, one, two, you can't hear anything. As soon as I click this, one, two, one, two, one, two, it becomes active. This is really cool because I can actually mute the mic on here if I need to on the amp, but I can still control all the MIDI elements of the RC505 Mark II. Okay, so you join us back at the desk and I'm just gonna show you what I've done. As you can see, I've made some changes to my preset here. I've got start, I've got record, dub, next track. This one actually says bass off, this one says radio off, and that's the mic off that I talked to you about before using the relay port. This is just connected by a MIDI cable, MIDI out to MIDI in on the RC505. Now the great thing is I've got a couple of these on toggle. So for example, start and stop changes completely and you can see we've got a little play and start buttons there, which is really cool. Record and dub. So if I hit record now, it's gonna start recording there. If we hit there, it's gonna go into dub and I've put that as a red and a yellow. If I click that again, it's gonna go green. And the next track actually gets us along to the next track. So if I give this a click, there's a little dot here. You can just about see it on the screen and it's gonna move across. And that way I can get to any track on my feet. If I click stop, it's stop and start all. So if I've got four or five tracks going, I press this, it's gonna stop the whole session just by pressing all start stop up here. And then these two, I've got bass off and I've got radio off. So if I click this one, that's my bass, which kicks in there. You can see that just came on. I use that quite a lot to sing bass lines. Click it again, it goes off. And then effect A, if I give this a click, you'll see effect A come on here. There it is. And if I give it a click again, it's gonna go off. And you can see it says radio on and bass on. You can see they've got both come on together there and I can turn them off individually. As you can see, I've changed the colors. I've also changed the color of the background. So in order to do this, you need to go into edit bank and then on entering the bank, all we do is we go over to a utility and one of the utilities you can do is set the background and the text color. And that text color is for the color of the text in the middle as opposed to on any of the presets. Now this is only scratching the surface of what this thing can do. It can send 32 messages per press. It doesn't have to be a press. It can be a long press. It can be a double press. It could be a release. It could be a long double tap. There's so many options here where if I press one thing, I could do up to 32 different things, depending on what you've got. Or as I press another one, it actually changes five different things, including volume changes, turns on a distortion for a guitar, and mutes the microphone. Now I've said this before in other videos when I did the video for the Morningstar MC8. Some devices will dictate what the CC number is or the program change number is for that device. Other devices like the 505, the RC600, you choose what that CC number does. So it is different depending on what you're using. And for things like the mute switch, we're not using CC 
PC numbers or program changes. We're using a relay port, so it's just like a normal switch, like an FS5 switch or an FS7 switch. This thing is almost perfect, and there's two reasons why I say almost. The two things they could have improved on with this, one is an internal removable battery. I want to use this instead of using a load of different pedals, so this can control everything and do lots of different things. However, I want this highly portable, and you can make it portable, that's how I'm doing it right now with the power bank, but it would have been really nice to actually see an internal battery so I don't have to do this because now I've got to find somewhere to put this. Now if you've already got a pedal board this will fit in nicely because it can run on 9 volt DC so you won't have to worry about power in that respect but if you're looking to just use this then you're going to have to find a way to power it whether it's portable or part of your setup. The second thing is me really 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 nitpicking here because what they've done is they've added the TRS for MIDI in and out so you can use things like wireless MIDI. However I really would have liked to see Bluetooth built in. The Boss FS1 WL has Bluetooth built in, I don't need to go and get a separate dongle. And for something of this size, it would have really been nice to have seen Bluetooth built in. But as I said before, I'm nitpicking. If I go and get a witty jack, I've solved that problem. I just have to put it on there. Again, it's something additional that you have to clamp on. The good thing is this is metal and the witty jack actually has a magnet that can attach onto the side of here fine, no problem. I can foresee someone making a 3D print for this where you can store the witty jack and the battery compartment, making this really highly portable. But those two things I'd like to see maybe in the future, but for what they've done with this, it's absolutely phenomenal. I love the displays. I love how customizable the displays are. I love that when you tap something, it actually tells you what it's doing over here. And if you were to send things like MIDI clock, you'll actually get the BPM coming up on this side. And right in the middle, it tells you exactly which preset you're on. I'd like to thank Morningstar for sending this out to me for review. My question to you is, would you use it? Could it be part of your arsenal to stop you pedal dancing, press one button, and five of your pedals change all at once? Things like the Omniports, the Relay Ports, being able to be a USB host, it absolutely is the most advanced MIDI pedal I've ever come across. Now this is their latest edition, which is the Morningstar MC6 Pro. Now if you want to pick one of these up, I've left links in the comments box, and in fact, it's right here. But if you want to see what I did with the Morningstar MC8 and Loopy HD, have a look at this video.